Hey guys, Joe here at Sports Grid. It's time for Pocket with Joe. The New York Islanders just took the lead over the New York Rangers. We've got one heck of a game out there. There's like less than 30 seconds or a minute left in this second period here. The Islanders leading it two to one. Now, this is going to be a complete battle to the very end. I was just looking at who was able to register that goal because, like, right as I hit go live, this goal came in so exciting for anyone out there backing the new york islanders they are sitting third in the metro right now both of these teams playing for so much it looks like brock nelson 30 second goal on the season he was able to just get so congratulations to brock nelson and anyone who took his player props today but let's have a look at what the book what the books are liking right now so we completely have, if I can get there, the Islanders as a huge favorite, minus a 290 on that money line. So huge overreaction. The Rangers only down one goal, plus 215 on the New York Rangers to come back and get the win straight up on that money line, that total of five and a half. I did like it to the over five and a half to start this game. It's plus 162 to the over. And I tell you, these two teams in the third period, I really do expect them to open up a lot more. While the Islanders will try to control that lead, the Rangers, I think, are going to tie this one up quickly. These teams want the win. They want as many points as they can get. I do think this one has every opportunity of going to overtime. So overtime bet on this one right now is plus 220. Pre-game, it was plus 350. So I do think at plus 220, there's still value in this. So keep your fingers crossed. This one can go to OT. We can go over that five and a half. I also had Panarin for two plus points, so he needs to get moving in this third period. Let's jump into the next game out there on the ice. But again, thank you guys so much for being here. We're going to go over every single game on the ice. The next game, the Seattle Kraken taking on the Dallas Stars. Now, looking at this matchup, the Seattle Kraken have nothing to play for except to play that spoiler role. This isn't a team that I have a lot of faith in playing the spoiler role, especially versus the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars are still fighting for something. So they're sitting first in the central with 109 points. The Jets and the Abs both have 104 points. So they're five points behind them. So they haven't locked up that first place in the central as of yet. I do think this is one where they're also wanting that president's trophy. So just looking at where they're sitting with the Dallas Stars with 109, the Tampa Bay Lightning, or sorry, not the Tampa Bay Lightning, New York Rangers have 110. So they're one point behind the New York Rangers. If the Rangers lose this one today and the Dallas Stars are able to get that win, they will take over that first place. So this is critical here for the Dallas Stars to come out nice and strong. So I'm going to look at the Dallas Stars in the first period. And that's kind of the way I like to go when I'm looking at these teams versus a team that is eliminated. I'm going to isolate that first period for that team to come out with the ability to go up and then lock down on the defensive side. I don't want to play a team total for the Dallas Stars even because I could see a situation where they go up one to nothing. And they just hold that lead and play defensive hockey out there and play it safe, make sure they get the win. So be careful when you're betting these teams that should win huge favorites on that money line versus a team that is eliminated because we know that eliminated team in a lot of these cases wants to come out, wants to spoil, but I don't see it out of the Seattle Kraken. So if you're looking at players who should be impactful in this game and that minus one and a half, you guys is at plus 128. So you are getting value. Jason Robinson, Wyatt Johnson, and Rupe Hints all would make my card for players to get those shots on goal, those points today on the board. We're going to move quick through today's slate, you guys. We've got the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Colorado Avalanche. Now, this game has every opportunity to go to overtime. These two teams are sitting tied for second in the Central. They absolutely want this win today. They're fighting for home ice advantage. So when we look at the schedules ahead of them after this game, the Colorado Avalanche have a harder schedule. If the Winnipeg Jets get the win today, they have every opportunity of taking that home ice because when we look at the Jets schedule ahead, they face the Seattle Kraken on Tuesday at home and then Vancouver on Thursday. When we look at the Avs schedule, this is a harder schedule. They face Vegas on Sunday and then Edmonton at home on Thursday. So it's crucial 
for the Avs to get the win, I would think, here to get that home ice. But Jets, with the value we're getting, and this is my problem here, looking at this matchup, I cannot trust um, the Avs just at the price. It's minus 152 here for the Avs on the money line and plus 126 for the Winnipeg Jets. To me, this should have been a pick -em. I know how strong the Avs are at home, especially offensively. Nathan McKinnon has been absolute fire, but... At minus 152, there's no value. The value is on the Winnipeg Jets as the dog. Now we have a total of six and a half minus 122 to the under. Plus 100 to the over. I'm going to stay off of that. I do think the first period stays under one and a half. I could see a situation where we see these teams open up after that first period. So just like the Islanders and the Rangers, they went out of the first period 0-0. And then in the second period, we've seen three goals. So we could see something very similar in this one. So I'm looking at that first period under one and a half at plus 102. Nathan McKinnon, you know he's wanting to put those points on the board. So Nathan McKinnon for a power play point is where I'm going to go instead of the two plus points because I do think the penalties here will give the benefit to the abs and they will be able to score probably on a power play. So Nathan McKinnon for the power play point. I do like in this matchup tonight. Yeah, I'll have some goalie props. We'll look at some goalie props at the end, Jason. I do think you look at this game. Um, we'll see if we do have goalie props up yet. So we're looking at just Connor Hellebuck. His prop is up at 30 and a half minus 106 to the over for the Winnipeg Jets. And I do think you would take that one to the over. I really do think uh, the Colorado Avalanche, we know their ability to fire and how strong this team is offensively for Connor Hellebuck to be able to allow his team to get the win. He, he needs to save over 30 and a half. This game has every opportunity of going to overtime. So the 30 and a half is a light number for me. I would have expected this number to come in at 31, 32 and a half. So I would take the 30 and a half for Connor Hellebuck to the over. Now the juice is actually to the under at minus 125. We know the Winnipeg Jets um, defense does step up, but Colorado is so strong offensively. So I would take that goalie prop to the over for Connor Hellebuck. Okay. Let's look at um, the Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres taking on the Florida Panthers. We're in another situation. One team eliminated the Buffalo Sabres, and this is their 13th straight season eliminated from playoff contention versus the Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers have been dominating out there on the ice. They've got shutout wins in their last two. Their defense is locking down. Bavrovsky has been absolutely phenomenal. Stolar has got one of those shutout wins as well. Now, Sam Reinhart was originally from the Buffalo Sabres. He got drafted by them back in 2014. He was the second overall NHL draft pick by the Sabres, and he was traded to the Panthers in 2021. I do think him versus his former team, you look for him to come out nice and solid, especially with how hot he's been on the season. So Sam Reinhart for the anytime goal, one of my favorite bets of the day for the Florida Panthers coming in at plus 170. I'd also look at his two plus points here. I do think he can come out nice and strong and be able to get two points on the day. That value on the two plus points, it wasn't up earlier and I haven't been able to get a minute to place my bet on it yet. Let's see if it's up. Yeah, we have it up right now. So Sam Reinhart for the two plus points is coming in at plus 250. I like that better than the anytime goal. I really do think he's going to come out nice and strong. So I would look at that at the plus 250 mark. Um, when we look at Sam Reinhart over... This season, he's at a career high. He has 54 goals and 91 points on the season. So phenomenal effort out of him. What else I'm going to look at in this one? Because the Buffalo Sabres are eliminated. I haven't trusted this team offensively. So I'm going to look at their team total under two and a half, especially with what the Florida Panthers have been able to do. One in goaltending and one on the defensive side of the puck. The under two and a half, it's juicy at minus 132. I definitely think Sam Reinhart for the two plus points at plus 250 is the best bet of this game. Reinhart, goal, let's go. Let's have a fun prop day. I do think there's a lot of fun props out there today because there's a lot of games that you can look for that money to come in. I'm going to talk about that one, Roman, in just one second here. It's the next game. So we have Jake Allen versus Urshan 
for the uh, Flyers, Jake Allen for the Devils. Looking at current odds in this one, the New Jersey Devils at plus 105, minus 126 for the Flyers, and a total of six and a half. Now it's juiced to that under at minus 124, and I really struggle to see any defense being played in this matchup. I'm expecting that first period to go over one and a half with both of these teams coming out and scoring early ones. The only concern here is Jake Allen has been rather strong in net since coming over to the New Jersey Devils. But I do think this Flyers team, with both these teams being eliminated, can find the back of his net. Looking at what we see for their schedule ahead, the Flyers, this is not their last game at home. They do have the Capitals at home on Tuesday. The Devils, they have the Islanders at home on Monday. I think the Devils can come in here and get a win. I love what we've seen out of these playmakers. And I know Jack Hughes isn't on the ice. But we still have a talented team here in the New Jersey Devils. I'm just going to look at some goal scorers for you. Timo Meyer coming in at plus 150. I love Timo Meyer to be able to come out strong. And Jasper Bratt at plus 175. And Nico Heischer, you can't say no to of the New Jersey Devils. I think between those three players, we will see those points coming on the board today. And then if you're looking at the Flyers, it's Owen Tibbet. Owen Tibbet has been driving this team with goals. So I do think Owen Tibbet can come out for the Flyers. Over one and a half in the first period, the Devils to get the win. And if I'm looking at my best bet here, I'm going to look at Nico Heischer for the anytime goal for that player prop and then Owen Tibbet on the other side. So I do think Jasper Brad and Timo Meyer get it done as well. Philly gave up. Yeah, Philly gave up. And the Philadelphia Flyers are completely beat up out there. And that's another reason I can't take this one to the under. This team struggling to make it to finish off the season. And I do think we'll get a better effort out of them versus the Capitals. Because that game versus the Capitals, the Capitals fighting for a wild card spot. Teams love to play spoiler, but there's no reason to play spoiler in this one. It is just a Devils team that's also eliminated. So give me a higher scoring one. Phillies still have a chance to make the playoffs. Um, I thought the Flyers were, well, okay. So they've got 85 points. They played 80 games. They, I just can't see it happening. So not officially eliminated. 80 games. They would have to win this game and the next one. That would put them at 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. 89, but then you've got the Pittsburgh Penguins with one game in hand. They've already got 86. I just don't see it happening there for the Flyers. And yes, they might give their best effort, but to me, they're 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 done. So I shouldn't say eliminated, not officially eliminated yet. But after tonight, maybe. Okay, the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Washington Capitals. Good luck tonight. You know, Philly needs this win. It's just a team I cannot trust. But Lauren, happy um, Saturday to you. Those are the teams playing the last home games. I love the Ottawa Senators in their matchup. The Nashville Predators, the San Jose Sharks, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Actually, I love all the home teams today. It's actually going to be a good one. Okay. Let's look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Andre Vasilevsky expected to get the start. And Charlie Lindgren here for the Washington Capitals. Current lines on this, we do have the dog here in Washington. They are plus 120 on the money line. And you guys know with how much they're fighting for, I'm willing to sign up for them with Ovechkin for the anytime goal as well. That total sitting at six and a half at minus 132 to the under and plus 108 to the over. I'm going to stay off the side or the total. I'm going to just look at the side. I'm going to take the Capitals at plus 120. It has so much value with a home dog. They've got 85 points. They're one point behind the Penguins for that last wild card spot. They are off a loss as well. And when we look at the Tampa Bay Lightning, they've got the first wild card spot in the Eastern Conference with 96 points. I do think you look here at Nikita Kucherov for two plus points. He has 141 with Nathan McKinnon sitting four points behind him. I do expect a strong performance out of Nikita Kucherov for the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I think Alex Ovechkin will answer back. I'm looking at his two plus points in this one as well. But I do think the best bet is to take the home dog that is fighting for so much more. I think the Capitals absolutely could keep it close in this game tonight. Two assists for 100. Yeah. 
Nikita Kucherov should come out really strong tonight. I could see him hitting those 100 assists tonight for sure. The Montreal Canadiens and the Ottawa Senators. So the Senators are in their last home game. They've got the Rangers on the road on Monday and the Bruins on the road on Tuesday. So pretty hard matches out there. We should know by Tuesday how the Bruins are going to be sitting. If they need that win or not, it will be interesting. Nothing really finalized in one team or another pulling away. So when we look here at the Montreal Canadiens, this team we know eliminated Premier getting the start for them and Corpus Allo here for the Ottawa Senators. The Canadians have the Red Wings on the road on Monday. Their last home game will be on Tuesday um, versus the Red Wings. So they go back and um, back to back with road and home versus the Red Wings. This game here, I'm just looking at the over one and a half at minus 134 and both teams to score in the first period at plus 160. We know the Montreal Canadiens are a scrappy young team out there that never give up and keep fighting. Nick Suzuki has been playing phenomenally strong and I do like his ability to get on the scoreboard. Brady Kachuk and Drake Batherson also playing elite hockey for the Ottawa Senators. So those are the players I would circle, especially in a last home game here. For the Sens, you got to think they get on the board. I like Montreal, Bailey, when they go down. So Montreal right now on that money line is plus 136. I do think if you see the Ottawa Senators come out strong to start this game, that's when I like to jump in on Montreal. If Montreal gets off to a fast start, then so be it. Um, then I've missed that opportunity. But I do think taking Montreal to come back. They never stop fighting in these games is where I want to go. You like the under in the Habs game. I don't blame you for taking the under in this one, but I just think that first period, we see a little bit of fireworks between these two teams. The Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now everyone's talking about Austin Matthews being able to break Mario Lemieux's 95-96 record of 69 goals. He's got 68 right now. He needs two more goals to break the record, one more go goal to tie it. Now, the books have him so juiced. An anytime goal for Austin Matthews tonight, minus 130. If you think Austin Matthews can get the two plus goals, it's plus 480 over on FanDuel. And I think it's worth a chance. Austin Matthews is so competitive out there, and he's facing a Detroit Red Wings team that, yes, they have everything to play for here, but they were just in a barn burner with the Pittsburgh Penguins and lost that game. Now they've got 85 points. They're tied with the Capitals, both trying to get that last wild card spot over the Pittsburgh Penguins who have 86 points. So there is going to be fireworks out there. Alex Leon getting the start for Detroit and Samson off here for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I do think the value is on the Red Wings to pull off the upset here, but I can't look past Austin Matthews. I would look at Dylan Larkin though of the Red Wings to be able to be hugely impactful in this game. His two points, um, he had two points last time versus the Maple Leafs, and I do think he can get on the board here again. So I would look at him for two plus points. He's had seven points, three goals, and four assists in his past five games. So he's been playing phenomenally strong. He needs to help drive this team into the playoffs. So getting a win here over Toronto would be huge for Detroit. I'm going to take the plus money with the Red Wings, but I'm taking this one over six and a half. And I do think this one has the ability of going to overtime. I expect this to be a 4-3 style game. Now, the scary thing of Austin Matthews and backing him for the two plus goals at plus 480, while the value is there in the matchups this season versus the Red Wings, he's yet to get on the scoreboard. So when you haven't lit the lamp against this team, this season, you got to think it's got to be coming today. So at least one goal, but at minus 130, I want more. So I would sprinkle on the plus 680. This is his last home game of the season. And what would be better? Having his home crowd see him hit the 70 goals. So I do think Austin Matthews at plus 480 for that that two, two goals. It's asking a lot, but let's go. Okay. Got feeling your wings win five to three. I could see that coming in for sure. If you've got a gut feeling on that five to three, definitely go in and bet that exact score for a little bit. You cannot um, not do so. Because if it hits that, then you're going to be and you're going to be frustrated. That's for sure.
Um, the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Nashville Predators kick off at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, the Columbus Blue Jackets, of course, a huge dog here. The Nashville Predators, the favorite at home, and this is their last home game. I'm expecting a lot out of them. Um, let me just find the odds. The Nashville Predators minus 260 on the money line, plus 210 for the Columbus Blue Jackets, total six and a half. Now that six and a half is juiced to the under at minus 122 and to the over at plus 100. If you like the Preds for the full game puck line, laying a half, one and a half goals is minus 102. I'm just going to look at that first period puck line. Like I said, playoff teams for me, versus eliminated teams i like to just isolate that first period in case they get the lead and then lock down so the puck line in the first period here for the nashville predators coming in laying the half a goal you're going to get plus money on that now langkin is expected in net for them and jet greaves here for the columbus blue jackets is confirmed he's two five and oh in seven games on the season with a three point one eight goals against average and a nine one six save percentage i really do expect the uh, Predators to be able to take advantage of him today. The Columbus Blue Jackets are sitting last in the Eastern Conference with 64 points. And we look at the Nashville Predators, they're the first wild card spot of the Western Conference with 97 points. Vegas sits three points behind them with a game in hand. So they need to keep this first wild card spot in the Western Conference. They need this win. They can't afford a loss here to the Columbus Blue Jackets with Vegas three points behind in a game in hand. Um, you got to look at Forsberg, though. He had a hat trick versus the Chicago Blackhawks. Sorry. The game is back on. We're back in action in the third period between the Islanders and the Rangers, and I can't help but keep watching my TV while I try to talk to you guys. I, I swear the distraction is real. So Forsberg got a hat trick, his 10th hat trick versus the Chicago Blackhawks in his last game. So now he has five goals and three assists in his last five. I would expect a big night out of Forsberg in front of his home fans tonight. It should be a good one. Forsberg, two plus points. I am right with you. It should be a good one. You're feeling the unders will show up tonight. I do think we're going to start seeing some lockdown hockey coming in. We have to because once you get to playoffs, that lockdown hockey is really a thing and the rangers are just pushing the islanders were able to clear it out of the zone so i love that you jumped on the rangers at plus 220 alive i think it's a phenomenal way to go because if they do tie this up you can come back in on the islanders and kind of hedge your bet out there because of the overreaction that we're seeing Oh, you guys, this is going to be a good day. I'm so excited for all the action on the ice. I'm live on Sports Grid tonight, so don't miss out. 7 to 10 Eastern. Got a great set of guests lined up. We're talking everything. Not only <laughs> the Rangers could have scored. They, they lost the puck out there right in front of the net. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm live on Sports Grid with Scott Wetzel. Great guests. UFC, we're talking tonight, MLB, the Masters, everything, and these games on the ice. And I'll have some of the same game parlays over there for you. Nylander and Austin Matthews dinner tonight. You act absolutely. I think you just look at Kucherov, Nylander. Um, okay, so let's look at Kucherov. Um, and then Nathan McKinnon for their points. I'd look at Forsberg for his points. And, okay, I can't, Nylander. I look at all of them for their points and combine it. Well, I have to stop watching this. This is getting really tense over there. Okay, the Boston Bruins versus the Pittsburgh Penguins. Allmark and Nadalkovich are your expected goaltenders. This game means so very much. We know the Pittsburgh Penguins are sitting in that, in that wild card spot right now. They have 110 points. The Boston Bruins... Sorry, they don't have 110 points. They're plus 110 on the money line right now. Minus 132 here for the Boston Bruins. Total of five and a half. Minus 128 to the over, you guys. And plus 104 to the under. I have to take this one to go to overtime. I think that is the best bet of this game. To go to overtime is coming in at plus 350. Like I said, so much to play for for both of these teams. The Pittsburgh Penguins are a frustrating team. If you're a fan and if you got money on them and they come out so solid and then they lose these games in the third period. So I'm looking at the Pittsburgh Penguins on the money line in the first period. That's coming in at plus 100. So I'm not caught up in the situation where 
we've got the lead. And then at the last minute, the Boston Bruins pull off the win. So give me the Pittsburgh Penguins first period money line. Give me overtime in this at plus 350. Give me Sid the Kid to come out. Sidney Crosby and get his two plus points tonight. I think he has to get two plus points for the Pittsburgh Penguins to have a chance of winning this one here. Now, when we look at Boston, they're sitting first in the Atlantic with 107 points. Uh, the Florida Panthers only one point behind them, but Boston has one game in hand. So they need this win, but so does the Pittsburgh Penguins in that second wild card spot with 86 points, the Capitals and the Red Wings right behind them with 85 points. It's going to be hard hitting scrappy battle out there on the ice. I'm not going to touch the total in this one because we have seen in some of these games, these teams open up right away where it should be defensive hockey. In my opinion, this one should be two, two going to overtime, but we could see it not be that. Oh, man. This game between the Rangers and the Islanders is freaking fantastic out there, you guys. I can't wait to just sit and watch it. I like the draw, too, and Forsberg. I think that's a great way to go with this one. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, the Vancouver Canucks and the Edmonton Oilers. I don't know if you guys heard, but Connor McDavid will not be out for Edmonton. I was hoping he would be because I wanted to get him for his 100th assist. He has 99 assists on the season. Oh, the Rangers almost scored. And um, yeah, we're not going to see him out there on the ice. So when we look at this game, I still think this is a higher scoring game, even without Connor McDavid out there. I know that defensive hockey should come into play. My problem here is I still don't trust Stuart Skinner in that for the Edmonton Oilers, and he keeps proving me wrong. But when we look at these two teams and the ability for them offensively to break out in a game that is so meaningful, Battle of the Pacific, I can't take this one to the under. I do think they play a more open game, so I'm willing to take this one over six and a half. But I do think it's not the best bet. I think the best bet is just taking this one to overtime. These games that mean so much, the overtime bet, the draw, is where I think your best bet of that game is. If we took all of these games that meant something to OT and not against an eliminated team, against a team that's fighting for it as well, I really do think we will get the majority of those overtimes cashing. So I'm taking this one to overtime. It's plus 360. I'm going to take JT Miller of the Vancouver Canucks for the power play point tonight. I think he comes out and scores on that power play, and you're going to get great value there. I'm also going to take Leon Dreisaitl for the anytime goal. He has been nice and strong out there as well for the Edmonton Oilers, especially with Connor McDavid not out there on the ice. So I do like Leon Dreisaitl to continue to step up. Now, when we look at this, how tight the Pacific is, the Vancouver Canucks have 105 points. So they're sitting first and the Edmonton Oilers have 102 points, but they have a game in hand. So they have every opportunity of taking the Pacific. They win tonight. They're going to be at 104. If it gets pushed to overtime, we will see it be 104 to 106. And then we do see the Edmonton Oilers with a game in hand. So they have a chance even with this one going to overtime um, to be able to do it. Yeah, they've absolutely had this game circled all season. That is for sure. I really do think whoever wins this game tonight will take the Pacific. So it is hugely impactful here. Vancouver would love to get off to that lead and lock down on the defensive side and not allow Edmonton to push it to overtime and not pick up that extra point because it's pretty much crucial. But Edmonton at home, there is no way I think this team will allow Vancouver to get up and not get points, even if it's pushed to OT. Yeah, it's hard to trust. It's hard to trust any of these teams at certain points during the season. We got two games left, you guys. We got the Anaheim Ducks taking on the LA Kings. Uh, the LA Kings are sitting third in the Pacific with 85 points. Vegas is only one point behind them here. The Kings need to get off to hot start, and they're facing the Anaheim Ducks again. Another eliminated team. You guys already know where I'm going with this one. I'm going to look at that first period puck line. Laying the half a goal here for the LA Kings. The LA Kings are a stronger team at home. On that puck line, it is minus 106 in the first period. The full game puck line laying one and a half, it's minus 142. While I do think they come out and win this and cover that puck line, I'm not willing to lay minus 142 
for them to win it by two goals. They're only 18 and 20 on that puck line at home, but we know this team gets off to some hard, fast starts, and I expect that out of them here. So give me the LA Kings first period laying a half a goal at minus 106, and then I'm looking at Kempe here again. Kempe for the anytime goal. I think he can come out nice and strong. The last game out there. We have the San Jose Sharks playing the last game at home. They have the Oilers on the road on Monday and Calgary on the road on Thursday. Both of these teams have been eliminated. The Minnesota Wild, I think, you know, it's a hard battle here with them not being able to make the playoffs this season. I do think the Sharks can pull off the upset in that price. That's all I'm willing to do. I'm just going to take the Sharks for a sprinkle. On that money line, we know they're coming off a win versus the Seattle Kraken as a dog. They won that one three to one. And the Sharks here at plus 176 holds value. Now you could take them plus the one and a half at minus 146. But I think they either win this one or get blown out. So I'd rather take a little bit of a sprinkle on the Sharks on the money line. But again, not the best bet of the day. This game between the Islanders and the Rangers is still a 2-1 game for the New York Islanders, but the amount of time the Rangers are keeping it in um, the Islander zone is crazy here. There, oh man, there was no one there for the rebound. The Rangers, they're just not setting up properly in there, and the Islanders are driving back down the ice to get another shot here. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. Yeah, you like San Jose too. Yeah, I think the Sharks can pull off the win at home. I would look for Edmonton to beat the San Jose Sharks, but I think Calgary probably falls to the San Jose Sharks in their last home game because I saw it happen last season where Calgary came out completely flat under, under Daryl Sutter in their last home game versus the Sharks. And I was just like, okay. Well, that is perfect. It is their appreciation day, not what I realized. So great to know, Doug. Thank you so much. Let's get that plus money on San Jose. I do think it's a fast first period out of those teams. You guys, all the best in all your bets. I was hoping we would get this game tied up while we were on air here. The Islanders are trying their best. And, you know, I can't believe the stops we're seeing out there by Igor. I really do think. Someone's going to score pretty quick. These goaltenders can't keep up what we're seeing. I would love to see the Islanders make everything a little bit more confusing in the Eastern Conference by getting the win out there because then that President's Trophy is up for grabs. And I don't know about you guys, but I do believe in the President's Trophy curse. And I like the Rangers, and I actually probably don't want to see them win that President's Trophy. So the Dallas Stars are sitting one point behind them right now and if the Dallas Stars win and the Rangers lose and you know what the Canes are sitting also one point behind the Rangers in the Metro so I know they want home ice so they don't want to lose this one down by a goal you guys all the best in all of your bets today thank you so much for joining me here on Bucket with Joe make sure you join me on Sports Grid tonight 7 to 10 p.m Eastern with Scott we're gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna make some money watch these games and live bet them as well so I'll talk to you later bye guys